So one of the most frequently asked questions that I'm getting as of late is, quotation mark, I'm new to the jaw harp. I'm trying to get sound out of the harp. It's making little or no sound. Is it me? Is it my technique? Or is it the harp? And the harp that I'm getting, when I ask the subscribers, well, which harp are you playing? Almost 100% of the time, it is this harp here. It is a Snoopy harp. So I thought, well, what better way to answer that than just order one, get it in the mail, get it coming here, and see what we've got. Now let's go ahead and we're going to get this package cut open. I think this harp might have ran me six dollars. Got on Amazon, so we're just gonna try to do a little unbiased review and unboxing. Packaging right, bubble bubble wrap, nothing fancy. Here we go, right here. This is the exact instrument people keep asking me. You know, is this is it me or is it the harp? I see. It actually is an attractive little box. It feels like it's packaged well in the box. I don't hear it rattling or clinking around. So it's Snoopy Harp, there's a picture of uh, Snoopy from Charlie Brown on there. And it says, we make new sounds on one of the world's o oldest instruments. It's fun, it's easy, complete instructions inside. See, it's packaged in plastic. A little plastic bag. Let's read the instructions. We have some instructions here. The tongue of the instrument lies between the two ends of the frame and is played by plucking the forefinger. It shows it shows you holding the harp. This isn't a Snoopy harp, but I'm just going to demonstrate. It shows you holding the harp like this in the picture. So that'd be correct. Holding it in the mouth. Place the Jews harp. I'm not going to read the instructions. I, I do play the harp quite a bit, so... There are some decent instructions. That that is helpful. I like I like seeing that. Now let's just take a look at the instrument itself. I'm seeing very very large gaps. I'm seeing a reed that's actually offset forward. Normally that would result in an instrument that draws. No draw on this. I'm seeing extremely large gaps. I could. A pencil fits in between those gaps. That's not normally something for good sound. Let's go ahead and let's just play this. I see the reed is also offset to one side. I don't like seeing that in a harp. Let's just talk about the finish here. It's chrome or some type of plating. It probably, this harp's not gonna rust. The crimp, crimp is okay looking. It's not totally closed on the end. The crimp we can see a little bit of daylight there. That's normally not something we want to see in a good harp. Let's come back up here. Let's see if we can play this. Let's see if it is actually the harp or if it's technique. Now I'm not going to make any adjustments to this. I'm just going to pluck it, see where we're at. It's making very little sound. I'm getting a lot of vibration transferred into my head. That's not normally a trait that I like in a harp. I don't want it to transfer a ton of vibration into my head. That makes for uncomfortable play. It makes for your jaw hurting. It causes headaches. Almost no breath. The gaps are too big. The sound is actually really bad on this because the reed's offset to one side and the reed's offset forward. I'm going to go ahead and remove the draw start on this instrument. I'm a harp maker and also a harp smith, so I can do this no problem. Oh yeah, look at those gaps. Look, now that I've pushed the reed back into place, look at the gap. It's clear off to one side. It's, it's very uncomfortably stiff. Um, and this I would call it a beginner harp or a toy harp. Um, normally in a toy harp or in a beginner harp, and a harp aimed for the beginner, you want to see low cost and comfort of play. I'm not getting comfort from this. The reed is, is really stiff. It's like a unproductive... Um, style of stiffness. It's stiff, but the gaps are too big. There's no... They could have made a much more uh, flexible reeded instrument, made the gaps tighter, and it'd be more productive. Kind of sharp on the ends. I don't like that. It's, I'm going to take a file and just take that little bit of sharpness off there. I don't like it when the instruments are sharp in your mouth. See, I'm making different sounds, but not much is changing. Yeah, 
let's just compare this harp. It was only it was only six dollars that included shipping. Let's compare it to some other really affordable harps. We'll compare it to a Pokin. A Pokin is a sixteen dollar uh, instrument. This one's from Russia. I'm gonna play the same thing on that Pokin. <laughs> good back pressure out of it and you can you can hear how I'm changing tones on this one there's almost no change to the tone yeah I can see how people are this is the most common instrument when you look it up on the internet of uh, when people want to buy an instrument this is probably the first search option that comes up comparing it from a six dollar instrument to a sixteen dollar instrument shipping included. I would spend the extra 10 bucks because there's there's not much to grow on here. There's not much sound. Um, it's uncomfortably stiff. I would say it's actually a little bit unsafe and I wish that this wasn't the most common uh, beginner instrument because this is the style of instrument where people may break a tooth on. A um, good instrument like this, being only $16, the reed's very flexible, very comfortable. <laughs> This is a Pavel Pokin, just Pavel po Pokin standard. Let's compare it to some of the Glazerin. Let's see where we're at. I think this one is $15. This is a Glazerin Scythian. I, I, this is my opinion. A Snoopy harp, sh if I was you, I don't think I would buy this Snoopy harp. It is only five bucks, but for a few dollars more, you can get an instrument that is a lot safer, more comfortable to play, and something that's actually going to create music. I am having a hard time um, getting music out of this. I'm making big articulations, my tongue and mouth shape, and the tone of it really isn't changing much. Let's compare it to a couple of the other Glazerin. Here's like a Glazerin Lighthouse. I think they're 22 shipped much much louder a lot of back pressure a lot of resistance so i'm not having to hardly articulate my mouth at all and it's picking it all up very flexible it's not transferring all this vibration to the head into my head it's not going to give me a headache let's compare it to like this is a glazerin wave another one that's around 22 I'll play that same thing on the Snoopy harp. Yeah, this thing is going to give me a headache. It's so stiff and it feels off balance, like the whole harp's wobbling against my head. It's transferring a lot of vibration into my head. Let's compare it to another harp commonly bought by... Um, beginner to intermediates. This is um, Glazerin Compass. Those are all examples of saturated instruments. Let's just go ahead and we'll compare it to one of the more affordable hand forged harps. This is a Gorka Talus, another harp I recommend to beginners. Um, for a non-saturated, more chain style instrument. Now this one's fairly stiff, but not nearly as stiff as the Snoopy is, but it's also not transferring a ton of vibration. It's not an unbalanced, what I would almost call unwieldy style of weed with non-productive stiffness. Now, to all of you out there who are looking at buying a beginner harp, I would not recommend this harp. It's not safe. It's not well made. This reed is horribly offset to one side. The gaps are too big. I could probably... No, no, the crimp is solid. I stand corrected there. Crimp is solid, but the gaps are too big. It's very, very uncomfortable. It doesn't make much in the way of music. doesn't do much it's only five bucks but it 
it's not really a very productive five bucks. You're gonna most people are gonna play this for five minutes and say, I don't like the jaw harp. When this isn't a good representation of what a harp is, a what in my opinion, if you're looking for a beginner harp, you want something that's a low investment, twenty to thirty dollars and under. You're probably looking at spending more like thirty if it's hand forged. If they're machine made like the Glazerin or Pokin, it's gonna be. $20, $22, maybe $16. I would spe save up an extra 10 bucks or whatever and buy a little bit better of a harp that's going to give you years of play making actual music and not being unsafe, uncomfortable, unwieldy, and just a harp that gives you a headache. Now, if you are looking to buy a, a jaw harp that's down in that Glazerin range, I think this is a Dan Moy here. I think they're like $9. They're played up against the lips. This is $9 versus the $6 Snoopy. We'll play the Snoopy again just for a reference. For something like $3 more, you can buy this Vietnamese style harp lip play. Decent volume, decent back pressure, responds well to articulation, responds well to everything you do with your mouth. And they're easy to play. They don't transfer any vibration to your head. So for all of you out there who are looking at buying a Snoopy or have bought a Snoopy and you're asking yourself, is it me or is it the harp? If you bought a Snoopy, I would say 100% of the time, if you're getting bad results out of it, it's not you. It's the instrument. This is not a good representation of what a harp should be. And I'm... I really don't like that it's the most common instrument that is advertised to everyone because this is not safe. This is not safe for your mouth. It's uncomfortably stiff. It's a non-productive style of stiffness. It's unnecessary. The harp, it transfers a whole bunch of vibration. And I'm betting a lot of people out there buy this instrument and then just say, oh, I don't like jaw harps. Jaw harps are no good. They're not fun to play. If that's the case, try a different harp. Snoopy harps are a no-go. Don't like them. They're just a poor representation of the harp. But I don't want to sit here and harp on the harp about being bad. If your only option is the Snoopy, I guess go ahead and play it. But I would look, take a little bit further of a look. Find yourself something like a Dan Moy, a Pokin, Glazerin, Scythium. Or if you want to spend a little bit more money, one of the regular Glazerin or Gorka. But anyways, that's going to be it for this, uh, for this little review and unboxing. If I was to give this... Let's just go ahead and we'll give this... Um, a score out of 10. If I was to give this a score out of 10, I would probably give this a one out of 10. Um, the only things that I can say positive about this are cost are good. Um, shape is good for beginners to hold stiffness, a big thumbs down gaps, a huge thumbs down the consistency of the gaps, the reed being offset clear to one side. I'd give it a zero. Um, this is just not, and we, if we look at the frame, the frame on this is actually warped instead of laying flat like a good harp should lay absolutely flat. Here we have one arm that's up, one arm that's down. This is this is just a toy harp, and I wish it wasn't a toy harp because it's not safe, and it. I, I believe this harp kind of gives jaw harps a bad name. A jaw harp is capable of so much more. Anyways, I love y'all. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more harpery. Keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. Be good to each other. Harp out. Okay, the... Okay.